United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're going to call this Board of Managers meeting to order on this January 23rd, or 12.38. Uh, motion for approval of minutes from the last meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opportunity for the public to address the board on agenda items only. Hear anyone? Okay, motion 19 2001. Motion to appoint a chairman and a vice chairman of the Board of Managers. I'll make a motion to appoint Judge James Gibbons as president. And uh, if it can be the same motion for vice president, Sheriff Mark McAndrew. Second. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 19-2002, motion to set the regular scheduled meeting days of the Board of Managers to be monthly on Wednesdays at 12.30 in the Commissioner's Conference Room and to be held quarterly at the Lackawanna County Prison unless otherwise specified. A motion? A motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Final motion, 19-2003, a motion to follow Robert's rule of order for conducting the prison board meetings. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now this is a report, 19-2000, the Juvenile Detention Center reports. Mrs. Stein? I haven't seen everyone so long. So both reports we're going to be reading? Okay. Please. Uh, December 2018, there were seven juveniles in the facility, um, not in our facility, in Northampton. Uh, November overtime was at $12,360.57. The breakdown is on the back. As you can see, it was mostly staffing. January's report, currently there's nine juveniles being housed at Northampton, two are being housed at Vision Quest. December's totals were $13,651.25 for a total of the year of $116,084.41. Again, the breakdown is on the back. Staffing seems to be the issue there. And that concludes my report. Anybody have any questions for Mrs. Stein regarding the November re or I'm sorry the December report? Okay, okay want to move on to the That was both of them. Is that both of them? Yeah, they're quick. Oh, okay. Well, you're fast. <laughs> Anybody have any questions for Mrs. Stein? Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. A motion to accept uh, Mrs. Stein's report as mentioned? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opportunity for the public to address the board. Members other business? Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Okay, this concludes the Board of Managers meeting for the 23rd of January. And we're going to move right on to the Prison Board meeting. We're going to call this meeting to order, 1242. Can we have an approval of the minutes of the last meeting? I know there was not a meeting last month, so I think we could probably skip that, right? Month before. The opportunity for the public to address the board on agenda items only. Joan Hodewanitz, 101 Penn Avenue, Scranton. 
I was looking at the warden's report for January 2019, and under the paragraph budget, it says, as of December 31st, 2018, revenue was at 111% and expenses were at 98%. We took in $700,000 more than projected and spent 427,000 less than projected for the year. And that's very good news. But then I was looking at the uh, chart for overtime comparison. And uh, for 2018, apparently $2,551,147 were budgeted for overtime. But um, we had over $3 million in overtime costs. And basically, we went in. We, oh, we exceeded the budget by $539,605.71. Now, I don't know whether how that plays into the entire budget picture since we seem to have revenues exceeded expenses by quite a bit of money. But I'm curious as to why our overtime came in so high. If how, how about we do this, if it's okay with you? When it's time yes. for Mr. Betty to present his report, yes. we'll address those questions at that time. Okay. Is that okay with you? That's fine. With okay. Me. okay. Thank you. Okay. We have four motions to go over here. Motion 19 1004. Motion to appoint a chairman and a vice cha chairman of the prison board. Make a motion to appoint Judge Gibbons and the Vice Chairman is uh, Mark McAndrew. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Gotcha, Patrick. Motion dash 19 1005. Motion to set the regularly scheduled meeting days of the prison board to be monthly on Wednesdays at 12 30 p.m. in the co Commissioner's Conference Room and to be held quarterly at the Lackawanna County Prison unless otherwise specified. So moved. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion 19-1006, motion to follow Robert's rule of order for conducting the prison board meetings. Second. Motion by Commissioner Cummings, second by Controller DeBilly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 19-1000, motion to approve all current payables for the Community Correction Center, Juvenile Detention Center, and the prison. Commissioner Cummings makes a motion. A second? Second. Commissioner Tiriani, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, controller's report, Mr. DeBilio. Yes, for the month of December 2018, the controller's office reviewed the prison inmate and canteen account reconciliations, which were prepared by the prison business office for the month of November 2018, and found no discrepancies between the reconciliations and the bank statements. The balance in the inmate account was $409,089.05 as of November 30th of 2018. The balance in the canteen checking account was $559,503 even as of November 30th of 2018. And in addition, as of November 30th, the canteen account owned two certificates of deposit, one valued at $15,000, the other at $131,987.20, which totaled $146,987.20. Uh, we don't have the December uh, report put together uh, as a result of the move that we've made from offices and the fact that Elaine Kingsley has been out for a few days uh, with uh, after a fall and that's my report okay thank you any questions for mr. DeBilio motion to accept his report so moved. So moved. Second. second all in favor aye, aye. aye. Community Correction Center report. Mr. Jeffers. Good afternoon, board. Good afternoon. We'll do the November report first. Um, 
Report for the Community Corrections Center for November 2018. Item one, our program totals were male work release had 56 participants, female work release had two. Adult house arrest had 116 participants, and juvenile house arrest had 16. Item two, our revenue, or our, I'm sorry, our, our revenue, yes, our revenues for the month of November were totaled $61,783.82. Item three, our program's expenses for November totaled $88,273.37. Item four, our program's completions. Work release had 12, house arrest had 28. Our program, vi program violations, work release had eight, house arrest had nine. Our program warrants, work release had nine, house arrest had three. Item seven, our budget report for the year at that point, overtime was at 135%, expenses at 86%, and revenue at 98%. Personnel was item eight, one part-time opening. And item nine is the proposed fees for 2018, or 2019, if we could skip through December, and we'll, I'll explain at that, uh, at that point. Mr. Chairman? That's fine. Okay. That is the report for November. We can go into December's report. The report for December 2018, the program totals, male work release had 52%, or 52 participants, female work release had three, adult house arrest had 105, juvenile house arrest had 14. Our program's revenues for the month of December total $51,143.18. Our program's expenses for December totaled $113,666.33. Item four, our program completions, work release had seven, house arrest had 31. Item five, our program violations, work release had 11, house arrest had five. Our outstanding warrants, work release has eight, house arrest had four. Our final budget for the year, item seven, our overtime was at 147%, expenses at 95%, and revenue at 105%. Uh, item th eight, personnel still has one part-time opening. Item nine, our proposed fees for changes for 2019, I, you can follow along. Item one, we're looking to eliminate the $25 non-Lackawanna County residence fee for work release. The reason being is work release does not accept any non-out-of-county uh, participants. Um, it's just something that was on in 2016. We got rid of that altogether. We don't take anybody from out-of-county in work release. So to update it, um, we would like to get rid of that fee. Item two, raise the fee for domestic relations participants from $10 a day to $15 a day. The reason being there was a grant that paid the additional $5 a day for domestic participants and it is no longer available. It ran out last year. Um, and that also brings them in, in play with everybody else that comes through our program at $15 a day, makes it even. Uh, item three, $35 fee for the initial drug test for work release participants. The reason is all house arrest residents are charged an initial drug, fee, drug test fee due to the multiple drug tests they take during their period of time on the program. Work release residents are also given multiple drug tests during their period of time on the program. This will make both programs uniform in policy. These proposed changes, if they go in, would take place and start on February 1st. They were going to start on, on January 1st if they were passed, but uh, we obviously did not have a meeting in December, and I didn't feel I was justified to charge anybody any different amounts until this board took a vote on it. And that concludes my report. A list of the uh, proposed fees you guys, everybody should have. If not, you could take this and pass it around. Do they have it? I just don't understand why we take that fee rate, even though we're not using it, but if we keep it away, then if somebody did bring something in and it would be there. The reason we don't take, we take them in from, for house arrest. The reason we don't take them in from work release is that um, they have to go through a medical process to come into work release. Everybody we get tra is transferred from Lackawanna County Prison. So when we take someone, it's, this is not someone who, is, who lives in Luzerne County and was sentenced in Lackawanna County. This would be someone who was sentenced in another county and they want to come here and stay with us for whatever reasons. In other words, someone from up here has a DUI in, in Lancaster County. We take them on house arrest, but we don't take them on work release because of the medical issues. We are not liable for them medically, so we cannot put them in the prison for the three-day medical intake process. Any other questions for Mr. Jeffers? Yeah, what's, uh, why is the overtime so high when you only have one part-time personnel? The overtime was high from the beginning of the year. 
is really where, it, where the large percentages came in when we didn't have the personnel. In, in January and February and March, we had uh, two individuals that retired at the end of last year. It took, uh, it took about a month to get new full-timers in there, and then it took about two months to get two new part-timers in there. So it was towards the end of March where we were fully st uh, staffed, and then those two individuals had to go to the DOC for two months. And we had to put them in in the fall, in early winter, so that they wouldn't be gone during vacation season when other people are off. Well, we'd love to have our second part-timer, yes, but no, it shouldn't be nearly as bad as it was last year because everybody is up. That's the 147%? It's, it's, a, it's a very large number. Anything else for Mr. Jeffers? Thank you, Mr. Jeffers. Thank you, board. Someone wants to make a motion on that? Whether yeah, we're going to do that. Thank you. We first, a motion to accept uh, Mr. Jeffers' reports as he's mentioned. Which would include the changes? No. no. We'll do that separately. Okay. We're going to do that separately. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'm going to need a second motion to adopt the three items that Mr. Jeffers mentioned regarding the Community Correction Center, these changes. Would anybody like to make the motion to uh, support these changes for this year? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Motion's passed. Thank you, Mr. Jeffers. Okay, next is the warden's report, 19-1003, Mr. Betty. Good afternoon, board. Good afternoon. Um, the, I guess I'll do the December report first, followed by the January. That's fine. Uh, the average daily population for November of 2018 was 878 inmates, of, of which 588 were county inmates. Uh, currently, or at that time in December, uh, we're housing 899 inmates, 786 adult males, one juvenile male, and 113 adult females. Of the 899, 224 were U.S. Marshal detainees and 81 were state parole violators. Um, overtime reports, uh, out of county board and community service reports are attached. Um, the staffing at that point in uh, December, uh, the uniform staff on shift was 171 with two part-timers, three on workers' comp, one on continuous FMLA, three on administrative leave, and no vacancies. Uh, FMLA, there was one officer on continuous FMLA and 32 officers that had intermittent FMLA, amounting to 18% of the correctional officers. As of November 30th, revenue was at 107% and expenses were at 91%. Inmates at or past the minimum, the number was 21. Five had no home plans. Um, six had their parole denied. Five had home plans submitted and were awaiting parole. And five had been remanded for the balance of their sentence. Extraordinary occurrence reports, there were five in the month of November, um, or I should say since the uh, October, November uh, prison board meeting, there were five. Um, on 11-21, a county inmate was being uncooperative and resistant upon commitment, and he was placed into the restraint chair so that a proper search could be accomplished. On 11-30, a county inmate kicked the chair at an officer while being arraigned in the video courtroom. She then resisted officer's attempt to escort her out and had to be placed into the restraint chair for her safety. On December 1st, a county inmate was resistant upon commitment, and he was placed into the restraint chair so that a proper search could be done. On 12-5, a county inmate attempted to harm herself by tying a laundry bag around her neck. Officers were successful in removing the bag, but she became combative. Uh, she was placed in the restraint chair for her own protection. On 12-11, a county inmate was banging his head off his cell door, and he was placed in the restraint chair for his own safety. There were, regarding PREA, there were five allegations of PREA violations in the month of November. 
Two were allegations of staff on inmate sexual harassment. Two were allegations of inmate on inmate sexual contact. And one was an allegation of inmate on inmate sexual harassment. All five were deemed unfounded. The completed investigations have been forwarded to the district attorney's office. Whole body scanning device. I continue to research this issue and will provide the board with an update at a future meeting. Moving to the uh, January report, the average daily population for December 2018 was 895 inmates, of which 596 were county inmates. Currently, we're housing 899 inmates, 797 adult males, two juvenile males, and 100 adult females. There are 213 U.S. Marshal detainees and 86 state parole violators. Um, the staffing update, currently our correctional officers Officer numbers break down to 173 staff on shift with two part-time officers, two officers out on workers' comp, one on continuous FMLA, and two on administrative leave. Uh, vacancies, I put zero, but there are 11 part-time vacancies, and I now have a uh, full-time executive assistant vacancy. My uh, executive assistant resigned uh, a week and a half ago. Uh, FMLA, 31 officers have intermittent FMLA, amounting to 17% of the correctional officers. Budget, as of December 31st, revenue was at 111%, expenses at 98%. We took in $700,000 more than projected and spent $427 less than projected for the year. I might as well address uh, Joan's concern at this point in time. Um, with the expenses, that's just one one line item. The overtime is just one line item in all the expenses that are included. So that coming in $427,000 below what was budgeted for us expense-wise that uh, included that overage, that one line item we were over uh, with the overtime. Uh, the reason for that, because I know I'll be asked that, is we ran short, significantly short for part of the year, especially the first half to three quarters of the year uh, we were understaffed and so there was a lot of overtime. Once we got that second class of the year in, in the fall, our overtime uh, went down significant, significantly. Okay, uh, inmates at or past their minimum dates were at 29, five have no home plan, nine have had their parole denied, and 10 have had a uh, home plan submitted and are awaiting parole. Five of them have been remanded for the balance of their sentence. Extraordinary occurrence reports. There were four since the last uh, scheduled prison board meeting. On 1220, a county inmate was placed in a restraint chair after breaking a cell door window and refusing to comply with orders from staff. On 1229, a county inmate was placed in a restraint chair after refusing to either take or hand over her medication, which she had hidden in her shoe. On 1 1, a county inmate was covering his camera and refusing to remove it and remove the obstacle, and he was placed into the restraint chair for his own protection. And on January 3rd, a county inmate was uncooperative upon commitment and placed into the restraint chair to ensure her proper search and for her own safety. PRIA, there were two allegations of PRIA violations in the month of December. One was an allegation of staff on inmate sexual harassment, and one was an allegation of inmate on inmate sexual harassment. Both allegations have been deemed unfounded, and the completed investigations have been forwarded to the district attorney's office. And before I conclude my report, I did forget to put in anything about GED, and just to give an update, um, we just started our second class of all female offenders uh, started starting today. Um, the first class has concluded. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties with the testing. We, we have uh, laptops and well, what, with the technology and with the obstacles to overcome within a jail and making sure everything is secure. We haven't been able to provide the testing as of yet, but we're getting there as quickly as we can. So we'll be testing that first class shortly. Second class started today and it's all females. And with that, that concludes my report. Any questions for Warden Betty? I have a few. Uh, in regards to the GED program, um, it's always going to be male, female, correct? Is there a reason that we do that? Well, we did the first class all male. Um, logistically speaking, it was easier for us. Um, we were able to have a much bigger um, pond to draw from 
and we were able to easily get 20 people in the class. We wanted to see if there was any bugs to work out, and we had decided that the second class was going to be all female, and then we would evaluate it and, and determine whether we are going to do kind of a, a co-ed thing or if we would keep rotating. I, I'm, I'm getting a lot of... Uh, Oh, yeah, 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 we could do a co-ed, but I'm getting a lot of feedback from staff members, including the providers, where they seem to, at this point in time, be suggesting it's uh, that they would prefer to see segregation uh, between the sexes. Well, as a board member, I would never approve a co-ed class. I mean, I don't know about the rest of the board, but I wouldn't, so you can just count me down as a okay. member that. Um, and then, now, how many women did we have initially? Did we have enough to meet the burden of a, a no. classroom? 15. 15, so yeah. short for the yeah. female Yeah. And then you had enough for the male class? Yeah, we had, uh, we had an abundance. Because, again, there's 10 times as many males as females. We all know the reason. Because yeah. Because it's just very, we all know the reason. Yeah. Common sense. Um, so, out of that first class, how did it work out? Well, of the, uh, we, we started, I believe that the exact number was with 20. Uh, we lost, I believe, five or six to people getting released. Um, outreach, formerly known as EOTC, was setting those individuals up for outside testing, and, and I don't know how many took the test or are planning to take the test. At this point, we've lost a couple more individuals, and I believe we're at 13 of those individuals that went through the GED class are still incarcerated. And I'm, again, I'm, I'm kind of pushing to get that, the computer problems and the technological problems um, fixed so that we can test them. I'd rather test them closer to them completing the class than have a, a long period of time go by. Uh, so as soon as we can, we're going to be testing those 13 individuals. If anybody does get out, they're being provided with information to go uh, speak with the folks at Outreach and set them up on the outside for testing purposes. Okay, so and then you already have your female class started? Yeah, just started today. And you had enough women to 20 women over there? 15. 15. Yes. Um, our numbers, I, I'm confused by the number of inmates. What do we have right now? Five, we, 588? I think it was 899 total uh, of, county. of the county ones, 596. That's up then. We're at 477. Right? A, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, we, I'm seeing an increase just with these two prison board reports. December's was 588, January's is 596, so there's a difference of eight right there. So, I, I, and that's normal. It's kind of like um, a roller coaster, up and down, up and down. It's just that the overall path, at this point, maybe we're slowly going up. So in November we're at 477. Is that where we're at? I I don't think I have my November numbers. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're not obviously. Well, then that's a significant jump from November to December. I don't have a reason why I don't have an explanation. My experience, two things, that, that's one of them, is when the weather turns worse, we tend to get an increase in locals. Um, there also, at least in my experience, tends to be an increase in domestic relation, not the domestic issues uh, around the holidays. And and could be that. And I did ask you, like we've been talking back and forth in regards to the GED program as well as some other issues that came up. And, you know, everybody knows the uh, marijuana issue is near and dear to my heart because I don't want it to be passed uh, recreational. So, um, because it's going to bring a quadri of uh, problems for us. But one of the comments that was made to me in regards to marijuana is that our prisons are bursting at the seams with marijuana users, and it's ridiculous that it should happen. So, um, thanks to you and your research, you came up with the numbers on um, whether or not that's actually a factor. Um, I don't have the numbers at my fingertips. I apologize. I was going to say, I, I think it was maybe 1% of our commitments were for possession of a small amount of marijuana. And we have 5,000 commitments approximately a year. Yes. So, yes. so under, under 50 inmates a year being committed for possession out of 5,000. Um, so that, that would be a false narrative. So I just right. want to make sure that I make that point that that is absolutely untrue. Our prisons are not bursting at the same time. Uh, resume, medical marijuana or marijuana of any kind. It's just no. paraphernalia from what I got. I got the whole report. Right. So I appreciate your work on it. Thank you very much. No problem. 
Any other questions for Mr. Betty? But it, it, I, for just from my experience, it's not uncommon, correct, Warden, that the, the population fluctuates, especially during the winter months? Yeah, yeah. And, and again, that, we... That happens frequently. Again, I haven't looked at the actual numbers, but my experience says there's always a slight increase when the weather gets colder out. Yeah. That's what happened. Thank you, Mr. Betty. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks. Motion to accept the more warden's report. I make a motion. Second by Commissioner O'Malley. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opportunity for the public to address the board. Joe Hodewan in Scranton. Uh, with regard to the GEDs. Okay, Commissioner, thank you. Uh, with regard to the GEDs, the Times Tribune published an editorial on January 3rd, make GEDs available to all prisoners. Uh, and they argue for co-ed classes. They argue for lifting the cap of 80 inmates per year. But they also made an interesting recommendation, and that is in how to fund the program rather than funding it out of the commissary accounts where the prisoners are essentially paying for it themselves, they recommended opening up the recycling contract with Lackawanna Recycling. Apparently, uh, prisoners are paid $5 a day, which is significantly below minimum wage of $7.25. And uh, the company has been paying the county only $60,000 a year since 2006. And I was wondering what the board and what Warren and Betty would, would think of uh, this recommendation for a new funding source. Thank you. Okay, that, that would be a policy question, I believe. That's a contract with the county, correct? Attorney yeah, Sofnell? With the county. Can the contract be reopened in the future? Yeah, I, I think that's what the motion I think that's beyond our scope, I believe, ma'am. Okay, well then that's something that we have to address with the county commissioners. Okay, yeah. beyond the agenda. Thanks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else like to address the board? My name is Phil Yavix. I'm a, a resident of Scranton, and I'm a volunteer at the Lackawanna County Prison, uh, currently with the distribution of books that's popularly known as the Bookmobile. <clears throat> Mrs. De <clears throat> Mrs. DeBarris asked me to just share the statistics that she had compiled. She thought it would be helpful for uh, both you and the community be aware that it's not her personal project, that there are uh, a committed group of volunteers uh, that are involved in this project. For 2018, there were 3,808 individual visits uh, to the bookmobile carts. Uh, obviously, not they're, they're all not discrete individuals, but uh, over, uh, over almost 4,000 uh, visits to the cart and 7,365 books were circulated over that time. Uh, so that it does seem there are, a, uh, it seems to be having a very positive impact in terms of keeping the inmates occupied. And uh, the response from uh, Warden Betty's staff have been very supportive in terms of keeping this program going. So thank you for your support of that program. Thank you, thank thank you. you very much. Dr. Stephanie Bressler, East Gibson Street in Scranton. And I had intended to ask about the status of women inmates' access to the GED program. We've received some of that information. But I do want to point out that trying out a program on men and doing what, as the warden said, what's easier for us um, does not seem to be justification for initially denying women access and now denying men access to a program that they want, that they need, 
and are helping to pay for given that the program is being funded by canteen funds. The Pennsylvania Code does allow for men and women to participate in programs together in county jails. Um, Pennsylvania Code 95.2263 says female inmates shall be completely separated from male inmates. This does not preclude rehabilitative projects and food service assignments where male and female inmates could participate together with proper supervision. As a longtime researcher and activist of women's rights, I was really astounded that after my pushing for fair and equal treatment of women inmates at these meetings for the past two years, that this prison would engage and what appears to be gender discrimination. I remind you that gender discrimination violates the civil rights of women inmates. And yes, women inmates, male inmates, have civil rights while they're in prison. Just last month, the Pennsylvania Institutional Law Project filed a lawsuit against the Berks County Jail uh, on behalf of women inmates alleging that men on work release status are granted significantly greater freedom, privileges, and opportunities. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. Uh, I also have questions related to the current medical contract. Is the current medical contract available online? I have looked. I can't find it. Uh, I do, I have been able to find the prior contracts online. Since the medical contract is a matter of public record, the public should not have to file a right to know request for it. Uh, since I don't have the current medical contract, I'll ask my questions based on the request for proposals issued for the current contract in 2017. According to that RFP, quote, the contractor shall guarantee accreditation by the National Commission on Correctional Health Care, the NCCHC. My question is, does the provider or the program or both require accreditation? Does the current medical service have up-to-date accreditation by NCCHC? The RFP also requires that the provider, quote, comply with the medical standards from Title 37 of the Code for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, end quote, that require a medical screening within 24 hours of admission, as well as a physical exam within 14 days of admission. Recognizing that women have a unique gender, have unique gender-specific health needs, does that physical exam include a breast exam? And depending on the female's age as well as past medical history, um, a pelvic exam, pap smear, and baseline mammogram as recommended by NCCHC. If a woman inmate remains at the county prison for more than a year, are those examinations repeated, especially for those women whose medical history shows they are at risk for breast cancer, cervical cancer, et cetera. The Inmates Handbook provides a complaint procedure. I understand that this is the procedure inmates have to, to follow uh, if they make complaints that they believe their needs are not being met by the medical program. Is there another? procedure that they can follow other than the usual complaint procedure. It seems to me that medical complaints would be different from most complaints in prison. We approved it in 2018. It was approved in 2018? They had to have accreditation? Okay. So is that the provider who was accredited or the program or both? The provider. And 
and so the provider would be held to NCC HC standards. Or one of the terms of the contract would be the litigation. If I recall correctly, it was to comply with the litigation. I'm not sure if there was a time period. But she indicated it's available online. Maybe she can give you the link if you need it. Do we have the link link available, Ms. Hart? We'll get her that. Thank you, Warden. Has anybody ever been refused to enter into the GED program? Um, short answer: Yes, we've had people that have applied for GED that have um, bachelor's degrees from accredited colleges, uh, just to, to have something to do. We, we have to do checks. We have to make sure the person doesn't have a high school diploma, a college degree, et cetera. We have individuals that um, put in an, uh, essentially an application to be in GED. I'm, I'm speaking historically because we just got this thing fired back up. Um, but historically, you know, you put in, everything's looking good, and all of a sudden there's a misconduct, and you end up in restrictive housing. Um, while you're going through class, you get in trouble and you end up in restrictive housing or you get released. You know, there's, there's a multitude of factors that so are involved. So if they are refused, if someone is refused, regardless if it's a male or a female, there has to be a good reason for it, correct? Yeah, and, uh, and a lot of times it's that person's uh, educational level is assessed. We have, a, we have a needs intake that's done within the first couple of weeks of commitment. And if that person is identified as somebody working with a second or third grade reading level, in the past, we had a we had a class that we put them into. It was kind of like a GED class preparation class. <laughs> I know that sounds redundant, but we, we were able to do that in the past. We're not there yet. Again, we're we're in the stage, uh, and I had told the Scranton Times this: uh, we're we're crawling. We're, you know, you start you crawl before you run. This is the second run through with the GED class, so there are things that will get worked out. Um, again, uh, I had mentioned this as well. The last time we had GED. More than 50% of our staff wasn't employed at the jail, you know, because it was years ago. It was, we ran it until 2011. So lots has changed since then. So people are relearning the little things that we learned throughout the years. Um, so yeah, many reasons to be denied participation, unfortunately. Thank you, Jane. I don't know why we didn't fix this when we got this office. Need more than two mics in here. So do you have other programs that women are? Uh, you know, able to utilize and men aren't? Yeah, yeah uh, I can I could provide the board with a list of that at the next prison board meeting. There's probably, probably close to 10 programs that are offered just to the females. And a lot of times that's because of the individual, the volunteer who's coming in. They may, maybe they want to come in and do a Bible study just for women, just for example. And, and we do have that kind of thing that goes on. Yeah, and, and just, just for the record, I voted no on the GED program because of this kind of, I mean, you're going to have problems continually because this is just going to, something else will come up and it'll just give them more room to complain and some other problem will happen and it's just, let them get it on their own. I mean, this, this money that we're getting, um, that's from the sale of soda and things like that, correct? Commissary sales, yeah. Is that the only place it comes from? Yeah, yeah. So if somebody puts a, a dollar fifty into it, machine for a can of soda no we have a commissary to list that you can order from you can buy sweatpants uh, thermals you can buy candy uh, you know, we don't we don't sell soda on it but but they can buy things like crystal light packets to add to water and they can buy coffee and tea bags and things like that but it's to purchase a product yeah yeah okay so it's not technically that they're paying for it this is a profit that was made off of the sale of a product yes so it's not technically their money and we can utilize this money on our own if we wanted to, which the law was changed back. So we don't have to spend it on the prisoners at this point. Right. We the, can spend it to pay for the, how much was overtime that was spent at the prison this year? We went over a bit, yeah, about a half a million dollars over. We could utilize that for the taxpayers who are actually footing the bill for the entire shebang and give it back to them and not let them spend all this money in overtime. So, um, you know, that's just my stance. Thanks. If, if I may, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that money has to be spent towards the benefit of the inmate. It, 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 it doesn't, but as a matter of policy, uh, That's our policy. the prison board chairman has asked me to work with him to develop a proposal for a 
policy on that just so we could set our own internal frame to, to be presented to the board at some point. Okay. And the other thing is, um, and that's good, the other thing is I, I, I would think it's in the best interest of our inmates that we attempt to fill our classes of GED um, classes. And I know that this is just, again, getting uh, started up again, and it's in its infancy this time around. But uh, we should explore the, the, any risks involved of uh, combining men and women into classes. I'm sorry. As a female, I'm going to have to object because I'll tell you what. Uh, so much is said in regards to what females have to put up with to begin with in regards to sexual harassment. I'm sorry, but females do not like being stared down by men, regardless of the setting. So as a female, I would, I would urge you to think about that before even putting that into effect. Because it's no fun with one female sitting in a room of guys oogling her. It's no fun at all. So please don't do that to any of our inmates. Thank you. No, you're absolutely correct, uh, Commissioner. Uh, that's why I said we should explore any risks that may exist. And, you know, sorry, it, if it turns sorry. out it is best to keep males and females separated, then so be it. However, if it's determined that, uh, you know, there are no risks involved, um, you know, I think we should try to include as many inmates as we can in our classes. It just seems to be in their best interest. But as we move forward, let's take a look at that um, situation of commingling or not commingling. No, not a problem at all. That's what I, that's what I plan on. I'm a female, you're a male. Do you have any idea what it's like? If they feel that way, if, if female inmates literally feel that way, and perhaps we should ask them. Um, Let's take a poll. How many females in here would want a bunch of guys in a prison looking at you and you're the only one in that room? How safe would that make you feel? It's really not the question. It is the question. The question well. is, would I be, and I have been in classes with all men, and, and... As a prisoner? You were a prisoner? No. Well, then I'm but sorry. I, I, your but I think we should out. ask women if they want to do this. And with proper supervision. And these are the same people that would be upset about what happened recently in our prison. I mean, this is ridiculous. Just put them in an environment that it's going to happen, and let's see what happens I, and throw it up in the air. I really? think it's a good question to ask the, the female inmates. Uh, obviously, in any, in any class setting, there's not many situations where separation is required. If that's the case for uh, a prison, so be it. But I think we should explore it. Thank you, Warren. Thank you. Anyone else like to address the board? Members, other business? Uh, procedurally, I'm not sure we adopted November's minutes, so I would move to adopt November's minutes since we did not have a meeting in December. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Whichever way you want to do it, Dave. Last year, we had, last year we had a motion for the um, the regular recurring monthly payments of payroll to approve for the year. I, that was left off the agenda because we have a biweekly payroll that comes out in between meetings. I would make that motion that Dave just explained. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, we have enough. Motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Tracy, can we figure out why in God's name they only have two of Yeah, we need. Like, this is so ridiculous. Thanks. Okay. Yeah.